Okay, we are now recording. For anyone coming to this later, uh, welcome to the April 6th, 2021 GitOpsCon CFP committee meeting, the first one uh, in the series. And um, we, uh, we are joined by the lovely people here. Um, there's, a, for transparency there, um, inside of the GitOps working group meetings on today's meeting notes, there's a link to a GitHub issue. So if anyone wants to find out how people got on this call and how you can get on the next one and what you can do in between, that's the place to go. So we have we have an agenda. Um, does, does everybody have links to the agenda, agenda and know that you can add stuff to it? Um, yeah, let me, I'm, I'm gonna paste it in the, in case um, that way it's handy for other people. Um, and then, so I guess I'll just go ahead and since I put my thing on there first, I'll go ahead. Uh, really just wanted to, to, to point folks to this um, committee meeting, committee tracking issue that Christian made. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It's just um, making sure that there's some transparency as to, you know, who's doing what and how that's, how that's working. So please comment on there if you haven't. Um, I think Shlomo, there's still like an open item for, actually, I'm sorry, Christian, when you say check mark means confirmed, does that mean mean that it's confirmed by the group? Oh yeah, so let me um, uh, confirm being part of the, uh, of the committee. So um, there was a lot of people that, that said that they would, that they, they wanna take a part in um, well, I you know, can't you know. check check box. <laughs> so I will. Yeah, just leave a comment if you don't mind, um, Shlomo. Or actually, this is fine. <laughs> You're talking now, so you leave a comment. That's cheap. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. And then I'll I'll reach out. Um, I'll reach out to Tana. Great. Um, I didn't really have anything to speak to really about this, um, except for just trying to make sure that, you know, we do have, um, we do have that project board for, for helping us to organize things. Um, I hope it's useful for people. Um, if, if you think we should change it up, totally change it up. Um, and anyway, <clears throat> but that's just housekeeping stuff. So I guess I'll just wait till anyone has ideas on their own about that. And yeah. I think my well, and, and more house, a little bit more housekeeping. Um, I mean, Scott figured out that if you're going to use a project board, it's actually easier to create an issue and put use that as the card because um, we were doing it another way before. It, it's fine if you're just putting in cards just like to jot down your ideas, but eventually, you know, um, we found it easier to retroactively go and create an issue and then make that the actual thing that you're tracking in the project, so. Just as a, as a note, just in case you, you don't know, there is a way, like you can click the little three dots in the card, whatever the name is, and convert that to an issue. So you don't have to kind of like recreate oh, anything. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Yes, you Lisa, I'm adding you to the <laughs> list of um, committee members. There we go. Oh, I have another housekeeping thing that I can put mine out the, at the end if people want to, if we want to keep going in order or should I just keep blabbing away? Just keep blabbing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is I'll just, I'll write it down. Um, uh, is key base. Mm. Just set up a, a key base team <clears throat> to help with things that we need to help with so far. Um, Shlomo, I saw that you pinged me on Keybase, and I'll I'll add you to that today. Well, the joke is I got Keybase when I was young, and I've never ever used it before. <laughs> it's changed a lot since then. <laughs> yeah. Was, oh, okay. Finally, some use. <laughs> in short, in short, um, for those that don't have accounts, it's the the most important thing to keep in mind is that the the why we're even why why even bother? I mean. Uh, I could just pull up the XKCD chat systems comic and we can all have a laugh at like, you know, how many different systems we are thinking about using. The only reason I suggest using Keybase is 
is for is not to replace everything that we have. We have a Slack channel. We have uh, we have GitHub. We have projects for things like that. It's really for right now. It's really only in case there's sense any information that's sensitive. That's it. So um, before we have a, a an open source one password account, which we'll get pretty soon, um, there's a, a technique to to uh, to encrypt files there and do file sharing, um, and it can be on a team basis. So I have a um, I'll post it again, but I have a a, a good GitHub gist that shows how to do that. I set it up for the Helm team, um, and that's what we've been using for for certain types of files. You know. Um, uh, the, the only other thing is um, to know if you if you, the main the main value that Keybase brings is it helps to reduce the possibility that someone can get a hold of something important. So it, the, its main value proposition is is being able to know that you can trust a person to have greater and greater levels of trust to know that a person is actually who they say they are, not some man in the middle or third party thing. Well, I wasn't uh, questioning Keybase. Oh, I didn't I think you were. Like <laughs> it's more like, oh wow! Finally, a use. I finally, get to use. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, this is just uh, info <laughs> for anyone uh, either listening in or like on the call who doesn't have an account yet. And the reason I'm mentioning that is is that if you are do need to make an account still, um, it's best not to put an organization name or anything like that in there. Keybase primarily, not just frowns upon, but really its whole value proposition is that you have one account that you prove you are who you are. So um, just make it you and and uh, yeah, please. Put in that issue, and I'll, I'll add you to the team. Uh, I unfortunately have to voice one thought, and please uh, don't be upset about it. I think since we all have a Google account, uh, in addition to the Keybase account, uh, I think the quality of the Google identity is good enough for everything we do. So I think it would be also good enough to share passwords. Um, you mean Google, Google uh, Drive or whatever? Google, Google, Google Drive. The only the reason I suggest against that is it's 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 known to cause problems, specifically in cases where you're doing demos. Yeah, I mean, no one else should be able to get in there without Google's IM, but it it comes right up in search. You're doing a demo, and all of a sudden, like your keys for this like whole shared team show up and. And uh, now everybody has to rotate our keys. It's a it's a pretty. I mean, if you wanted to put like say an encrypted a PGP encrypted file in there, that would be one thing. I'm not trying to be like insane here about this, but I'm just. <clears throat> you mean the visibility is too? There's too much visibility, like accidental visibility. That's right. right. Yeah. That, that's the that's the known security risk. Not that there's you know some like way in. Just a. That's an interesting thought. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But again, if you cool. PGP encrypt it, no problem. Um, the only reason I suggest Keybase is because it specifically does that for you on a team per team basis. Yeah. Yeah. So thank, thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, I for the for those housekeeping things here. So the the I actually I leaned on Scott to try to like put all this together because um, the uh, CFP is closing soon, right? Next the next. Uh, next Friday. And then it actually, we don't have that much time to make decisions because, you know, there's only two weeks until the event after it closes. So we actually, you know, we need to start like doing some of the stuff. We actually need to do it like in a few days. Right. You're so right. I wanted to get, I wanted to get like this meeting this week and next week um, to go over um, the, the criteria. So I think, um, Leo put together uh, a good good draft. By the way, thanks, Leo, to, uh, for, for for doing that because this is my first time doing this here, and so it's linked in the um, in the agenda doc. But let me um, also link it here in the chat for everyone else to see. Do you want to share your screen? Perhaps? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was about. I was about. I was thinking about doing that. Thank you. Uh, maybe this one. Can you guys see my screen? I yes. took the liberty to start preparing uh, a spreadsheet, which will help us with the work. Get, get the process yep. going. So yeah, so if you have a link of that, um, if you can drop that in the chat, 
or in the in the doc actually maybe. it's uh, it's next to the form responses oh gotcha it's gotcha the, because obviously uh, it has to be linked to use the data so i suggest yeah. we don't mess with the form responses but uh, does they have uh, some sort of a working sheet and, and jumping just real quick on, on an item of that I added to the agenda, everybody on this call has access to the form responses, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, in the chat. Uh, so does anyone have a, a, uh, thoughts on the on the guidelines so th this was i think leo you, you took you took this yeah the, so um, this is NCF. this is basically a, a kind of like a distilled version much more uh to the point f based off of the cncf guidelines and uh, basically there's kind of like a handful of, of concepts that are are relevant i think um the fact that there has to be some level of control in terms of conflicts of interest so it's it's very broad in, in the context of just like if you work with the person that submitted if you work closely with the person that submitted the proposal or it's kind of like there's some personal relation uh, you can't you, you can't participate in that uh, evaluation um then the other one was the fact that kind of like this grading mechanism of, of a one to five poor to excellent that I just kind of copied over and the, the concept of categories, right? That there will be multiple categories that would be uh, evaluated. So I, I uh, those are not verbatim what's in the CNCF. They're kind of like a little bit of, of an interpretation of my own and, and what I think uh, we should go for. Uh, and then I added something that was not in the CNCF exactly. And it's kind of like the mechanism to effect, to effectively uh, average all those different scores uh, because kind of like what I have in mind is we evaluate each one independently we assign a score for each one of those categories and we basically average those four scores into a kind of global CFP value uh, we basically order them descendingly on, on global value and evaluate on, on broader criteria right like uh, is there a lot of uh, redundancy in subjects across the top selections, right? Um, I think we also should have a sense of what is gonna be happening at KubeCon because we don't wanna have like the same talk in the in GitOpsCon that something is gonna be showing in KubeCon the day after. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, we are not asking for that actually. I, you know, I kind of disagree with that. I think if people wanna do both, fine. <laughs> But, I mean, think it, uh, but what I'm saying is, do, do, you, you're saying that if it's the exact kind of like exact or very similar content, we don't mind. Actually, I disagree. Um, I think for stuff that's gonna show on KubeCon, like accepted KubeCon, KubeCon talks, I would limit mo at most to a slot in the Lightning talks as a kind of teaser preview summary of the long talk in KubeCon, because everybody who's in our zero day will be also at KubeCon. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think we should give a chance to the people who have to say something very much about GitOps, which is maybe also not Kubernetes related, and also a chance to people who didn't get into KubeCon with their talk, maybe because it wasn't Kubernetes related. I'd like to, to hear Chris's uh, finished thought, because I think, I think there was more information. No, I, I think that's reasonable, right? Like rack and stack them priority wise, if they're at KubeCon, right? Like bottom of the list kind of deal. I, I think that's reasonable, but uh, I would not like just say flat out like, oh, you got accepted at KubeCon? No, we're not going to have you because it's very easy to do the same talk two different ways, in my opinion, okay. Um, okay. as a professional you know, speaker, I, right? <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I tend to agree with um, with both those points. I, so I, I, I think they should have loyal, lower priority, but not flat out say no. Um, yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's my, um, my, my first instinct is to be like, okay, like we, we should give original talks and things specific to get ops for, um, you know, the, the ones that we like first, right? And then, like, if, if we can, if we need to fill out space, right, uh, maybe we won't have this problem, but if we need to fill out space, then we can, 
like do like a lightning talk or ha have those those talks be lower on the priority. Um, I agree. Just just just, just to be clear, I, I don't think uh, kind of what I was implying is not saying no to any talk that has mm -hmm. uh, overlap, but that it has to be or that I would suggest it is a component that is incorporated in the decision process, right? It's that we should be mindful of what is gonna be presented afterwards, not just what is gonna be presented in the zero day to, to some degree, I guess. Um, so do you wanna add that into and, the, into the um, selection guidelines in a more explicit way? Um, I think it's there because I added uh, is the the committee will select the committee will select from the highest ranking proposals by evaluating the following criteria is the variety yeah. of subjects and expertise levels balanced for the event so kind of like what I'm think, saying there is we want to make sure that for GitOps con yeah. there is the stuff for beginners there's kind of like entry level stuff more advanced things there's ideally a balanced variety and that there are no major overlaps or duplication uh, with talks that are going to be presented in KubeCon and the KubeCon event. I don't know if that's a, or, a, a, a faithful way to word what we're talking about. Um, so I'm all open for maybe maybe we, we said we, we wanted to say give lower priority. Yeah. You know, not not that there will be none. Right. Just say if you already have an accepted talk at KubeCon, this would be another accepted talk at KubeCon, like share the wealth kind of thing. Um, yeah, so here maybe um but I will point out that we only have eight submissions right now. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, like we probably shouldn't think about this much. Well, yeah. I mean, we can think about it as long as we want, but like, yeah. Yeah. let's use our time more wisely at this point. <laughs> and yeah. solve the problem when it's on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, we will get a hockey stick at the end for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, I agree. And I, I skimmed them and they're not overly impressive yet. So... <laughs> Yeah, so um, so let's. Uh, I'd like to maybe go line by line here. So here it says each proposal must be reviewed by a minimum of three members of the review committee. So um, are we thinking? So I'm wondering if we should. Are there any thoughts on how um, how we how we divvy up the talks? So. Um, <clears throat> well, someone at WeaveWorks can't judge it. I mean, this is going to kind of sort itself out, right? Like, if it's at Red Hat, we can't judge it. If it's at WeaveWorks, they can't judge it. Yeah. You know, gotcha. and everything else is kind of up for grabs. I would uh, expect the people who are with companies that uh, submitted talks or who have a conflict of interest to be honest enough to step down from reviewing those talks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And, and Honestly, I'm, with, I'm with okay with that. Uh, event, I wouldn't bother with more kind of technical compliance in this area. So yeah, so I, I would um, actually my question was more about are we set? It says a minimum of three members, but it, so like if some get reviewed by three members and others get reviewed by four members, wouldn't that skew the number? Wouldn't that skew their score? So what? What? Mm. I, what I, I guess what I'm asking is, are we saying you know? three members uh, are you saying three only? members only yeah only okay. yeah or are is you know I, I guess here it says a minimum of three members i think maybe we should actually decide on like yes you know your score is based on three members yeah i think that's oh i'm well, sorry scott yeah scott's hands raised yeah, yeah go ahead uh uh thanks uh real quick um is, is the idea how to keep this fair right is am i understanding that correctly mm -hmm. that's the yeah that's my the genesis of my question yeah right and what i've heard so far is that we've i think it depends possibly our, our process might depend on the number of submissions if there are for example 10 submissions i can read all 10 of them mm -hmm. there are yeah. 50 submissions we might want to divvy this up yeah. you know um, and the reason I, I pointed out three members is because I think it's it's a it's a good starting point. In, in other words, I think anything below three members is not fair. Of course, a single review doesn't doesn't go. Mm -hmm. Two, there is no no uh, uh, kind of like breaking in consensus. You know what I'm saying? Two, it, I think three is likely the minimum number to get uh, a fair just 
average across multiple perspectives. Um, anything below that doesn't work. That's when I said minimum. But I do agree with you, Christian, that that we, if one if one CFP gets reviewed by if one proposal gets reviewed by three and another one by all of us, that definitely will skew the the score. So we don't want that to happen. Yeah. So I I, I guess Cornel this I might... Cornelia's hand raised. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Maybe yeah, we're getting see... to that point. Cornelia's yeah, we might be getting to that point. I, and also, I can't see the uh, everyone's screen at once while I'm sharing mine. So mm. I don't know, if, Scott, if you okay. want to handle the. Sure. The hand raising. You did such a good job yesterday. That I'm <laughs> yep. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So Cornelia then Shlomo. So yeah, I wanted to make a couple of suggestions. Um, so I, I've learned a lot. I've been on the programming committee for the DevOps Enterprise Summit, where we get hundreds of submissions and have a programming committee about the same as this, the size of this one. And so a couple of rules um, I think that are super helpful is, first of all, I don't have any objection to there being more than three reviews. Um, and I think that that's fair. Uh, we're gonna average. So it's not total score, it's we have to average across that. So we can we can make up for the difference in three versus five or something like that. So, so I wouldn't want um, to constrain that. The second thing is that we have a similar rule, uh, slight, slight variation where we say any talk that ends up with an average of, and our average is the system that we use you end up, there's three different criteria, but then you end up with a score from zero to five. And so we have a rule that says any talk that is a three and a half or higher, which is kind of the minimum bar for like, if you can't get a three and a half, then you're probably not in, based on the number of slots that we have and things like that. Must, that's the one that must be reviewed by a minimum of three people. And every talk must be reviewed by at least two people. Um, and so, so I, as I'm saying that out loud, I'm realizing that's probably more complex than we need here because I don't anticipate that we'll get 300 or 400 submissions. So all of this is to say, I like the rule of a minimum of three. I think that we do an average. The last comment that I'm gonna make though, is that um, I, had, I had been on the programming committee for some W3C conferences, which were blind. You, the system was set up so that you couldn't see who was presenting, you couldn't see, you, you were based on the proposal alone. And the first year that I did get DevOps Enterprise Summit, I did that. I didn't look at who the submitters were and things like that. And then I realized over the last several years that there's a lot of value in that. It's like, we want to hear from the large organizations and their experience reports. And it's, so there is relevant criteria there as well. And so all of that is to say that as a programming committee, I wanna balance, I, I want to be fair, full stop. I wanna be fair. We aren't gonna be unfair, but we are responsible for programming a kick-ass event. Sorry if, I'm sorry if that offends anyone. I'm a kick butt event. <laughs> um, we are responsible for creating a fantastic program. And so it's okay for me, for example, if we end up selecting something that ends up with an average score of three and a half over something that is an average score of four and a half, because there's some criteria that will make it a better event. We already talked about one of them. This talk's already on the KubeCon agenda. So let's make room for this other talk, which is really going to enhance our schedule and enhance, you know, the, the program that we put together. So let's be fair. Let's have rules to help us be fair. And then let's also remember that the goal is to put together a, the best program we can. And so we will make some flexible decisions as well. So long as we're calling each other on biases and things like that, I think it's, it's safe to do so. I'm good with that. Cool. Uh, thanks, Cornelia Shlomo. And yeah, um, Christian, mm -hmm. if you could head over to the GitOps uh, submissions tab on your shared screen. Uh, you got the spreadsheet open. open. On the left. Wow, he knows your computer better than you do. That's pretty scary. Oh no, this is something else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a 
Okay, thought, let me quickly share my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not allowed to share, so. Oh, no. one second, please. I could stop. Oh, yeah, you should. You should be allowed in yeah, the security settings anyway. Yep. Now I can share. Okay. Um, so, what I did is I while we were all talking. Neat. I went yeah. ahead and I set up a protection on the raw data so that nobody would ac accidentally change it. If like go here and change it, there comes a warning that says, don't do that. <laughs> nice. And gives you a chance to bail out. And I created a sh sheet called review, which in this gray area, which I actually uh, forgot, I have to protect it as well, um, which here, Uh, just a second, we'll have the same warning. So in the gray area on the left, we have just the raw data mirrored, but without personal information. So that it's the, the actual stuff that we should be reviewing initially. And I created a little table where you can now put some grades here, like, I don't know, four, one, five. Yeah, like four, 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 I think you get the idea. And I just realized that here uh, we see a bit too much. So let's reduce that to something like that. And now we get here uh, the result. And I hope that will help us to settle the whole topic. And uh, even if we now decide on a different way of scoring or doing or whatever, this is really quick to change. Like, this is no awesome, big... by the way. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, if you have any wishes, uh, what I should be changing here, just tell me. Um, there's a uh, there's a bit more to that. Um, here's a total which I was just about to do. Here's a column for KubeCon repeat. And my thought was that here in the last column, we can put some reasoning thoughts or whatever notes we want to keep for ourselves about this talk. I don't know, special minority speaker, we should take it nevertheless, or um, I know him, he actually doesn't speak English. What should we do? I don't know. Yeah, whatever notes we should take into consideration. And then we can add further columns on demand. Um, so the question is, is that something workable? Cornelia, what do you say? Yeah, I think it looks great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for this. This is actually yeah, this wonderful. Is cool. Yeah. Okay. This actually answers, um, there's a few questions I had. This actually answers like most of them, like because I'm more of a, a technical guy, like how technically are we gonna do this? But I think mm -hmm. this, is, this is great. Now, one quick question is that you have you have five you've you've made room for five reviewers. Well, initially, um, I had three, and then you said, "Well, maybe three isn't enough," so I quickly added two more. Yeah, and I'm wondering whether um, we yeah, I I think that's fine. Um, it it. Uh, I was, what I was going to say is, do we want to have a, a column for each individual? Yeah. So was... Cornelia's relevant score, Shlomo's relevant score, Scott's relevant score. You can do I like that. that. I like that. Uh, how many, how many is it? How many are we all together? Exactly. Eight? How many are we? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's eight. eight of us on the yeah. call. Oh, sure. I can add three more. I found out that this is really easy. There, there is also um, one other person who's not on this call who had initially set out or had, who had volunteered to do that, that I will check in with them. Okay. So we need four more altogether, right? Is that correct? Sounds right. Yeah. Yep, I think yeah. so. This formula survived. Okay. Yeah, I'll fix the formulas later. So we want to have altogether nine slots for reviews. 
I guess like yeah, because uh, should be we just put name, people's I guess, names? Like, yeah, yeah. That, that's I think that's what Cornelia is saying. It's like just it's you know I I think he has placeholders for now, but it's just yeah. that'll be a person's name in each. Right. And it doesn't mean yeah. just because your name's on it doesn't mean you should grade it, right? Like check for correct, correct, yeah, the bias so, criteria, yeah. Because it might, and then people good, can Chris. use the comment. They can stick a comment into the cell mm. if they want to say, you know, I think this is particularly relevant, or this is totally irrelevant, or something like that. You know, some comments that even I find that making the comments reminds me when I go back, um, like what when I thought through this, what, why did I score it this way? So I find that helpful. Okay, um, so we said we want to have nine slots. I'll be fixing up the table in a moment. Anything else yeah. you want to begin? Okay, that sounds good for yeah. now. Yeah, we can do it just in time, but while you're editing it, I think a column for accept reject um, is helpful. And um, one of the other things that I want to circle back on is that uh, when we, I think that having interaction with the submitter to help them refine. So one of the things that we do fairly frequently is when we find that there's two people from the same company, for example, that have submitted talks and they're closely enough related, we might circle back with them and say, how, how about you do a joint talk? Or they might be across two different companies. And you know, how about if you bring a business leader with you to this? I don't think that's relevant here, but the, this is the type of thing that we do as well. So as we go through and evaluate these things, I think it's fair for us to, to circle back and request more info. Like, I, I wouldn't say take a super thin abstract and do a lot of work to figure out what did you actually mean by this? But if there's some follow-up, some dialogue we wanna have with the submitter, I think that's good too. Yeah, um, I pretty much expect us that once the date is over, we will send out an email with like BCC to all these submitters, uh, letting them know that we actually got their talk and that we're now gonna look at it and also ask them to submit further information. Um, mm -hmm. And then kind of, but also give them a very short deadline, let's say from Friday till Sunday or whatever, to please submit that information. And then we can ask, for example, about uh, if it has been accepted at KubeCon, if it's a repeat talk that they gave already 20 times, stuff like that. Uh, yep. And also like what's, how relevant are the GitOps principles to their talk? Because that's actually the one uh, item in the review criteria that I personally was missing. Because I don't want to have talks actually that come and tell, well, uh, we do GitOps and then after the talk, we all say, well, this was a CI ops bullshit. <laughs> Tell us okay. how you really feel. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, exactly. Sugar yeah. Coat it, right? Like, <laughs> sugar coat it, Shlomo. <laughs> yeah, sugar coat it. No, well, I mean, I think everybody. I, think I agree I know, with you. I yes. ops talks yep. out there, and I don't think we need to have a conference that will show more CI ops talks, unless it's a talk that spends two minutes on explaining why their old CI ops setup wasn't good enough, and then explaining how they rebuild that into GitOps. Sorry, I'm yep. hogging the meeting. You're fine. Um, so I just raised my hand for this. Uh, quick, um, just quick two cents is that, as we've said before, I want to. I, I personally want to be cautious about. Um, I mean, look, we have a process set up to help with to help average our biases, right, and to help keep each other accountable on things that shouldn't eat that could be biases that shouldn't be averaged in you know so that's it's good that's what the process is for um as far as criteria goes uh in terms of get ups i i like what we're hearing we want to help put on a good conference that actually represents what 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 get what get ups are um what get ups is rather <laughs> but just i just wanted to note that a, a couple of things we said in the past is that even when writing the the principles or like refining the principles, you know, I know there are earlier versions of these, but refining the principles for the working group. Um, 
we've noted that 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 GitOps is a journey and that it's progressive. And so mm -hmm. it's going to be very unlikely that, well, I don't know. Um, I can imagine it may be unlikely that all of the proposals will follow exactly these principles that are set forth, which we may, which we have not actually even released a version of from the working group. So I just, I think it could be something that we bear in mind, but I just wanted to note that I thought perhaps we should um, keep all of that in mind as well and be kind to us, each other and everyone. Totally agree with that. Yep. Yeah, Leo, Leo had his hand raised there. Yeah, I just want to kind of like echo what, what Scott said, because I think part of the whole exercise here is to also understand exactly how what GitOps means in the wild, you know, and, and, and how it's being applied and how it's being understood, uh, because it's still in flux, it's still being defined, and it, it should be defined in a way that incorporates what what the real use cases out there really bring forth. So I think I think I just want to kind of like resonate to what Scott said, I think we want to be open to want to be open period not not i mean of course the two within the context uh, not not not, not uh, for things that are completely off subject but but we want to be open to different interpretations of of the concept we have an agenda um do, how do we feel with this part of things right now i I put some notes under uh, Christian's criteria note, and then I just put another note under processes and wrote down a few things that people said. I might have missed some things. Um, right now, I missed some things. Um, then we have another couple of items on the agenda. Should we should we get to those, or do you want to revisit the agenda real quick to make sure that we are on track with our last twenty minutes? I don't want to take yeah, away I, from this. This seems this is very yeah, useful. This, yeah, this is this is very useful. I don't. Um... I think a lot of this, uh, I think we've actually talked a lot about, about this. I don't know if we want to uh, continue on this track or, 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 wait, or wait for it for the, the next sync up. Um, I do want to talk about the timeline that we have for voting um, because it, it's a very tight timeline. And the, the, the timeline is essentially we close the CFP there's two weeks and then we have the event. So we need to not not only one vote, but give but vote in a way that gives people enough time to do recordings if they're gonna do recordings um, and get their content together if they're doing it live. Um, um, about the recordings question, can we actually handle recordings from a tech perspective? What do you mean? Yeah, oh. yeah. so are you, are you talking about the platform that we're using? Yep. Yes. Yeah. We 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 got a hop on right. That uh, Chris, do you know if that that handles recording? You're on mute, by the way. Chris. You're muted. Kids talking oh, in not. the background. So the uh, the platform should be able to allow folks to upload videos. I think Aubrey and us. I think it was Aubrey and Christian. We were discussing like upload versus live kind of deal, and it can do both. Okay. But isn't isn't I can isn't, check. isn't Shlomo asking of whether they? the kind of like presenter would be able to kind of like log into Hopin and use Hopin oh. as the recording mechanism. Uh, so that they, no, that would not be the recording mechanism. Okay. Cause, cause I, I think the, the whole idea here is that they, it, most of these things are going to be pre-recorded. Matter of fact is I think mo all of them are going to be pre-recorded. So either we give them some tool that they can use to record or some instructions that uh, somebody I think uh, already linked in the document that that's shared uh, some best practices, but they're going to have to kind of like record it and, and put it somewhere. Right. And uh, right. that's going to take time. And I think we, in the, in the, in the kind of like estimated timeline that I added to the document, uh, I think we should leave some buffer for requesting redos like it, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't happen automatically that video comes out perfect <laughs> and uh, people might struggle so we we might need to kind of like circle back and say you know you gotta you gotta redo this because uh, it's not good or whatever talk with the lighting just like this and no one said it's terrible so <laughs> <laughs> tough man it's tough like lighting i know is... i know that's everything but yeah. 
it's a good point. Yes, there might be some redos or request for redos. Which at that point, I would wonder if somebody does a redo or we or you request a redo and somebody rejects it. I'm assuming you thus reject the talk. Or, or we could help them out because, for instance, I, I did a talk that the, the way that they recorded was they actually just brought me into a Zoom call and they recorded the Zoom call. So if if we do that, we could kind of like help them out and avoid the kind of like round trip latency of having to request a redo right. and and just say, hey, you know what, your lightning is no good. You you kind of go go ahead like this and and not waste time mm -hmm. if we wanted to coordinate recordings with them. That that got suggested for the last talk that I did on video uh, as a means to get recording the recording done, and and I guess that works for for some people. They can just show up and and we'll let them know that you need to change your lighting or or whatever. And then you know what that also simplifies. Like if if they don't have a proper kind of like scenery behind them and they want to use a, a virtual background, it's a whole lot easier to like just add it to Zoom than it is to configure OBS to do virtual background and stuff like that. So the one thing yeah. I've heard recently though is that Zoom like recording locally, like just by yourself, I think has been like busted somehow. That's what I heard from Josh Burkus yesterday. I think. So we'll need to double check that that's still possible. I, I did okay. a I, I did a local recording and I Cornelia has her hand raised so just real quick. Okay. I, I did a local recording of, I've done a couple last week or so. Okay. Uh, a matter of fact is I got kind of like the setup to do separate audio streams and whatnot so that you could isolate the audio for the guest, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And it worked all right. I didn't have okay. any Maybe that but was Cornelia, sorry about that. So no problem. I'm I was raising my hand because we only have 14 minutes left. And I think that we should but we should bring the conversation up. I think that recording quality, Chris, you have an action item to make sure that recordings can be played and all of that stuff. I think that's good. Let's take that up on in a subsequent meeting, maybe in more detail to figure out how we're going to do that. Who's going to help them record the things that takes people, producers, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I I want to circle back to you, Christian, which is should we, I think we should propose a timeline for voting amongst this group and kind of at least tentatively agree on that. I think that's important for us to do today so that we can all plan and make sure that our calendars are open enough so that we can dedicate the time to do the, the submissions. We can start reviewing them as, as they come in, but we should understand that timeline. And then I also think it's super important that today that we at least at a high level talk about the slot count hmm. um, so I, that we I, know when we're doing reviews, are we accepting four papers or are we accepting 15 papers? Right. So that's an important criteria. I would yeah, like and, to and, have uh, a mock agenda somewhere in a spreadsheet or even in docs. The, there it is just helps us to kind of visualize how the whole event will look like, also including breaks, uh, or maybe, maybe free form exchange uh, slots or whatever. Yeah, so, so can we put that right into the same spreadsheet so we have an, a one stop shop? I know yeah. there, I think there was a suggestion somewhere, but maybe we can pull it into the spreadsheet. Yeah, that's Do what I was going to say. I, I, I estimated some time frames, uh, kind of like walking backwards from the event, and they're in the in the um, in the document that is linked in the meeting notes. That I don't know if you can open it up, Shlomo, real quick, because uh, I think Shlomo is the one that's sharing. Um, one? Yeah, so that one. So if you go all the way up, all the way up. So we got a, a CFP open and close. And then kind of like I basically took it backwards and try to allow it enough time for dry runs and testing how long we have to get the recordings, blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of like just an estimate that I would like us to kind of like walk through. Um, um, I meant more like something yeah, that, this. That's different than the slots. Yeah. But you're talking about timeline, which I think is, you're right. We, we should close on that as well. The timeline yeah. for reviewing yeah. submissions and stuff. Right. So two yeah, because I, I, exactly. Two so topics. Uh, time, timeline and slot count are the two topics that I think we got to cover. Yep. Yeah, I think the deadline for the twenty first. I think that's that's fine. I think I think the twenty first is when we should. Um, I think I want to push it back a little bit. So from from your agenda here, uh, Leo, is actually 
like voting on the 1920 and like the 21st, those emails go out, right? Because the sooner they know about it, the, the I think the better. Um, but I don't know if that gives us enough time to like decide. Because you got here um, deadline 21st and then email to presenters the 23rd. That gives them a week to not only do the recording, but to submit it and for us to push back if there's any issues. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, like I believe that we as a committee, I believe we as a committee should see if we can, we should calendar some time to get together like we are now to discuss, you know, we've concluded our voting, you know, and then we need to come together. I know we'll try to do as much asynchronously, but there's, it, it will be so much more efficient if we can at least have a couple of meetings. So maybe that following Monday, Tuesday, we put two, you know, two uh, one hour blocks on the calendar for Monday, Tuesday. Can we choose uh, a different locale than United States if it's anyhow possible? What do you want to select? You mean? Something with a little bit less oh. uh, roundabout backwards to the like front UTFA formatting. Or... <laughs> for dates and numbers and whatnot. Uh, yeah, put it wherever you want. Let's put it in yeah. EU somewhere, because isn't yeah. this EU? This is yeah, KubeCon EU. EU. Exactly. Yeah, um, no yeah, way there. Either, Regu either Regu Central, Regu European, like Rome, Central European or, yeah. or UTC, one or the other. <laughs> so I, I, as a local, I like uh, Ireland because it's English, but not American. Not American uh, English. Gotcha. <laughs> works for me. But it's GMT plus one, right? That's the time zone. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's Central uh, European yeah. time. Central it? European time. Yeah. Hey, my hometown. Yeah, there yeah, it's go. our it's our time, slow mo. Yeah. <laughs> it's our time <laughs> to shine. Okay. Um, I believe as well. So I can happily build a, a kind of dynamic schedule here where we put a start time and durations and everything else will be calculated. So that we can use this Sounds as good. a planning document. Yeah, no, I think I think that's uh, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Um, I can put in. Um, I, I'm still trying to find the link to the spreadsheet. If someone could put in the chat, see see what happens first. I you know, put in the spreadsheet. Email. I put in the chat. Oh, you put in the chat. Yeah, I can outline the rough um, agenda because we we have the the. Um, the planning committee meeting on Thursday. Um, oh, there we go. Review worksheet. I got it. Thank you, Shlomo. Um, I can just essentially just paste from there to here. Um, but it looks like, if yeah, if you could do the formulas, I can try to copy some of that over. Let me try to find that sheet as well. Um, uh, just a, a quick question around Hopin. Is, is Hopin kind of like just one single stream where we stream the recordings back to back? Or is there some action that you have to take to switch between one and another? So I've not gotten into Hopin yet, but the way all of these platforms typically work is that uh, there's a producer behind the scenes doing all the switching, right? So. Okay, because the reason I'm asking that is to determine whether we want to kind of like organize talks back to back or whether we want to have some buffer between talks so that people can actually go and do whatever they got to do. So for instance, in Vevi- From that perspective, it looks, it's a single pane of glass. It's right? a single, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Like, cause we're not having like multiple tracks or anything, which Hopin can do. Um, but since we're single threaded, it'll all just be one. It'll just be one, yeah. Cause at, for instance, Bevy, if you have multiple talks, Right. You would go in a talk, even if it's in the single track. Mm -hmm. And once the talk is over, you have to exit your current kind of like yeah video I wasn't happy and, when they and, chose and go to another one so that was very painful yeah um yeah no i think uh hop in is i mean i can ask i can double yeah. verify i still need to get into it to be honest with you to make sure i can do everything i need to okay. do that. but yeah i'm pretty sure that's the case okay so we can assume kind of like back to back is good it's mm -hmm. just could just be a uh, no no buffer between talks okay um I mean, and, unless we have some like sponsors or something we want ah, cool. to like I shout out. Did. Yeah. So here's the formula work. You can now like 
don't change, like you change the start time and don't touch the other times. And then you just add the durations you want to have and everything else will be calculated. Oh, fancy. Somewhere yeah, there, I'm, I'm playing with oh, it right that now. Is, that is some yeah. Excel spreadsheet yeah. awesomeness. Cornelia. Yeah, that's He's really our cool. power yeah. user. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as you could see, I also had to look up how to do that trick. Uh, I'm just very lazy, so I try to avoid manual labor. That's right. Isn't that Cornelia what, uh, has has her hand raised. Yeah. Right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't see that. Go ahead. Yeah, no problem. So, um, since we only have five minutes left, I did want to jump all the way down to my last um, thing on the agenda, and that is invited talks? Question um, mark. Mm. I have one in particular in mind, and I would love to hear if there's any objections. I would like to invite a talk from the CDF, probably from Tracy Miranda directly, um, yes. because. Yes. Obviously, go ahead, Shlomo. The F is for sure not the Colonial Defense Force. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Continuous Delivery Foundation. Ah. Continuous Delivery Foundation. I will spell it out. Um, and uh, and so I would like to invite Tracy to be an invited talk um, to do a to to really just bring the communities together and to show that. Um, really to have her talk about what GitOps means in the context of the CDF and um, and her intention, you know, her, her desire to have our communities work together. So I would love to have that as a 15 minute. Okay, I'm seeing lots of plus ones. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. I will we'll send a note to Tracy. <clears throat> yeah. What happened? So, Kristen, do you want to do you want to push back the date to the point? Oh, you already did. Oh no, the the kind of like emails to presenters to the twenty first kind of like condense the or timeline. At least, uh, um, so I I want yeah. So maybe uh, and we only have like like three minutes left. Maybe we can start the next um next time we have this meeting with this topic. But okay. we we do need to block off at least in our calendars time to do the voting. Um, like de dedicate our time, right? So I want to, I'll dedicate, you know, two hours of my time Monday, two hours of my time Tuesday or however long, right? Right. Um, and then <clears throat> maybe do a meeting on the 21st to kind of just maybe finalize everything and then send the email out either on the 21st or the 22nd. I think that that's my proposal. Okay, that, that's cool. And by the way, one thing that, that Philippe uh, taught, mentioned on Slack that I think is very valuable uh, the the selection guidelines and selection criteria should be publicly exposed to those that are participating in the CFP. Uh, so as soon as we we kind of like nail this down, we should some put them somewhere so that people know how they would be. I I agree with Philippe. I don't know what the rest of the team thinks, but but I think it, this is kind of like, this should be yeah public knowledge. This should be. I just made a note under the processes section of our doc. Do we have any action um, items that are important to, to note before we wrap up? Oh, I didn't want to cut anyone off. I just don't want to I ask. Have a, I have a short question about the platform. Do I understand correctly that the platform will allow uh, interaction between the audience and the speaker while the speaker's recording is running? So that we have Q and A and talk yes. kind of at the same time, or how will how will this work? That's a very good question. I don't know if there's a separate Q and A function or not. I'll, I'll I'm going to ping Aubrey right now to see if I can get in to hop in. Like if we do recorded talks, I think it would be really great if we could have this kind of parallelism that people watch the talk and the speaker is free from talking, so that he can actually focus on the chat that happens during his own talk. I think we would have wanted to add a kind of like field to the CFP form saying, will you be available at a certain time to participate in that? Because when it's recorded, I don't think everybody would necessarily be available at, at that yeah, specific I, hour. If it's a point, if, which is okay. I don't want to host a radio show that just plays uh, canned music. So I would expect every presenter to be available at least during and a bit after his own talk some might uh, might submit a talk that's uh, and they're from a different time zone so they might not be available due to several reasons but but 
Obviously, then I mission. wouldn't take them either because if they would go to an on-premise conference, they would also have to be active at the yeah, time zone I, of the conference. I would say um, that that's like a selection criteria. Like if you're not available during your session, yeah. wouldn't that preclude you from going right like like what do you submit if you don't plan to be there right like that's exactly right like i knew i was submitting to a a, a eu time zone when i submitted my qcon talk right like i knew i was gonna have to get up early that day makes sense i added that as an action item I added two action items um so we can circle back on that um we don't have to wait until the next meeting to circle back we can address this in yep. Slack and email. Yeah, we can do this all this asynchronously. Um, yeah. So whoever's not on the Slack, I think we're all on our here. Um, I think we can, we can just do a lot of this asynchronously. Are there any other important action items? I know there are other topics that could always be addressed, but any other it's action just, items? Just a quick make? note. Can, can you, Shlomo or, or Scott, add a link to this form to that same document, uh, uh, kind of like somewhere so that we can have uh, oh, an easy way to find it? Which document? Uh, so the, to this, the, this this spreadsheet that Shlomo is putting together. So like if we go to the meeting notes, just basically add yeah. the link to this form in the meeting notes so that we can find. The it. only question I have about this is that we, we don't want. Oh, it's not it's not public. It's not public. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 Never mind. I mean, the spreadsheet has permissions on it. Bye, Cornelia. Uh, so these Bye. are the current permissions of the spreadsheet, and Leonardo is our guardian of these permissions. <laughs> yeah, I do think that we should, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. I do think we should be clear that, um, that, that this is to be, that this is to be made, or this is to be kept, you know, between the, the program committee. If there's any reason to address it afterwards with someone, we can always do that. But yeah, that seems to be standard practice. Um, okay, well, we're one minute over. Was there any, any anything else burning? Um, um, yeah, actually, I have a wish uh, for Leonardo. Could you please create a Google shared drive in your organization, put the spreadsheet and everything else in there and make us a member of that? Yes, that matter of fact is I already did that, but I don't know if you know, Shlomo, I was a little bit worried about moving the spreadsheet into the shared drive and the, messing the connection with the form. Do you know if that? Uh, the, the ID of the spreadsheet won't change. I don't think it's an issue. Yeah, no, it's a unique ID per spreadsheet. Like per I guess, object. I guess yeah. I guess we'll see. <laughs> right. That's so all anyways. I have your consensus that if that thing breaks, we're we're all we're all in it. Let's go like this. <laughs> this is Google and not Microsoft. Okay, well, I'll check out. <laughs> all right. So I'll 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 move it uh, to the drive. I just put everything in there. Uh, matter of fact, is this document the, the one that has the proposed uh, timeline and uh, selection criteria is already in that shared drive. I don't know if I shared the drive or the document with you all, but uh, I'll share the drive. Thank you. The cool. nice thing about the shared drive is you can set uh, restrictions on that, for example, prevent download and further sharing. Yeah. So uh, for the security minded, this actually provides a pretty good security envelope against accidental information leakage. Uh, I have for one thing I, I, should, I should mention very quickly. Uh, Tony um, Menzel added a note to this issue that I pointed out in the, the beginning issue um, nine minutes ago that I just saw, um, who, who said, I'd like to once again offer my help reviewing CFPs. I did it in Slack some time ago, but I think it got lost. Oh. So that's there. And let's address that async. Yep. Yeah. Okay. If you have any change requests, to the spreadsheet, feel free to ask me. I can always take a few minutes and tinker with that. Um, so I said you all have permissions and the restrictions are only set to bother you and warn you if you change something that shouldn't be changed. Did, um, um, actually, Scott, I'll, I'll ask the, uh, this async asynchronously. And then, so I don't want to take anyone else's time. Okay. Cool. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.